Alright, so what's going on guys? My name's Chopper, and welcome back everybody to a brand new video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Black Ops 4 Zombies, and more specifically, I wanted to discuss Voyage of Despair and the Easter eggs that are going to be included within this map and everything that I know. Now, in my personal opinion, Voyage of Despair looks like the most interesting map that we have, you know, coming out within these, uh, the maps on Disc 4 Black Ops 4. We have Blood of the Dead, we have Voyage of Despair, and of course we have Nine. Now, we don't really know a lot about these, but just from what I know and what we've seen so far, Voyage looks like it's going to be the most elaborate in depth and closest to a huge zombies experience that we've come to know and love. About two weeks ago I spent a couple days in LA courtesy of Activision and Treyarch. Thank you so much for flying me out there to play Black Ops 4 and get hands-on time with the game and uh, experience the reveal in person. Now we didn't get any hands-on time with the zombies content as you guys know we just got to play the multiplayer which you'll be seeing a little bit of that in the background but today I wanted to dive a lot deeper into Voyage of Despair and tell you guys everything that I know about it. Now if you guys are excited for Black Ops 4 or any sort of zombies map that is going to be on this game, then make sure you do absolutely just crush the like button right now. We're going to aim for 500 likes on this video. I know you guys could do it. It'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. Be sure to subscribe if you are brand new as well. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Before we dive too deep, I need to make sure everybody's on the same page. I'm pretty sure everybody's aware that Jason Blundell has made it clear that these two storylines are going to be separate from the Ether storyline, or there's going to be two sort of channels being told at the same time. There's going to be, you know, the premise crew and what we've come to know and love over these past 10 years, but there's also a brand new uh, storyline that Treyarch is writing along with the new stuff, but they are completely separate. As far as we're aware, they're completely different universes and they don't cross over at all. Maybe that might change a little bit later, but that's that's not the point of this video. Point is, what I'm trying to make right now is that this storyline is now being built from the ground up. We've had four brand new characters who already seem to have a lot of personality. We have Shaw, we have Scarlet, Bruno, and Diego. And these are going to be our four that are presumably going to be in all the DLCs or whatever they decide to do content-wise with these maps. But it's going to be a crew that we're going to know a lot about and uh, sort of be with throughout these next couple months. So with that being said, and kind of having an understanding of how we get to these different places, and in the 9 trailer, we see them take a sniff out of this kind of alchemy bowl, and either this transports their entire soul into somebody else, or their physical body transports there. We don't really know yet, as we still have to play the map to kind of figure out the story and whatnot. But this is going to be our ground zero, if you will. And I think it's safe to say that we've come a pretty long way in terms of zombies easter eggs like per volume per map since we started. Our first zombies map was Nocturne Toten. I guess the quote unquote beginning of the storyline. It didn't really start there you know what I mean but uh, we kind of give it credit for being the first to set up the story as it kind of spawned from the internet but now Treyarch has developed the storyline and they know where they want to go with it and you know the easter eggs that, went, that they want to put into each map to build that story. I know that was pretty long winded but what I'm trying to get at here is that Voyage of Despair is going to have the most amount of volume per map that it, of easter eggs that we've ever seen before and trust me this map is huge i was talking to jason about this at black ops 4 and he specifically said that this map is actually massive now this is almost a one-for-one -one replica of the titanic and i'm putting some like pictures on the screen to sort of give you a visualization of what we can expect but obviously they couldn't build the entire titanic for scale but it's pretty close and i think that with how big this map is just in terms of square footage how many rooms there's going to be, different uh, environments that we can be in within the ship itself, that they're going to pack so many easter eggs that it's going to be overwhelming. Because they're building a new story, because they're getting us a brand new crew that we have to sort of figure out as time goes on, they're going to give us a lot to work with in this map. And not to mention, we don't really know how big 9 is, the other map is going to be, so I don't think it's going to be as massive as Voyage, but this being said, I think that this is going to be the more jam-packed map with easter eggs, so... Jason also ended up telling me that this map is bigger than Shadows of Evil in terms of square footage, but also, if you think that Shadows had a lot of easter eggs to it and a lot was packed into it, then he said just wait for Voyage, and I assume that this means there's going to be even more put into this map. That's like, that's like almost too much, you know what I mean? Like, I I'm not saying I'm complaining at all, there can never be too many easter eggs in my opinion, but it's cool to see how much work they're putting into these maps. And they claim that this is going to be the most replayable zombies experience ever, and I believe them. Black Ops 3 was already super replayable. We basically, like, there were a lot of streamers and YouTubers use this game as content throughout I the IW season after Black Ops 3, and even pretty much into World War II as well. Like, it's kind of supplemented with both. That just kind of goes to show how jam-packed Black Ops 3 really was with content, and they're saying that BO4 is taking a step further in that direction in all aspects. 
I guess we already somewhat know what we're doing in Voyage of Despair when we actually load up the map just from the character quotes that we heard in presumably the intro cutscene that our four characters have already been speaking together before they know each other, but they need to be collecting this artifact that can be found in a safe. And we see Scarlet access that with this device that she's made, and then it gets stolen by some guy who's probably an enemy of her father, uh, and uh, he ends up getting turned into a zombie as well, and I guess this affects the entire ship. So where we go from that is a little uncertain. Now, I did ask Jason a really important question about Voyage, and I was actually, I guess, about Black Ops 4 in general, and this was one of World War II's weaknesses, in my opinion. Now, it's not, it, it was a design choice by World War II, but I don't necessarily agree with it. However, I asked Jason if Black Ops 3, since it was so solo-friendly and, uh, you know, every Easter egg was able to be done by yourself, but it would take maybe a little longer, you'd have to do things differently, it, it, but it, overall, it was very solo-friendly, which I enjoyed. Is Black Ops 4 going to be as solo-friendly as BO3 was? And he said, even even more so like it's gonna be more set up for solo players if you want to go in by yourself or even with a team with all the new mutations and different ways you can play the game you can add AI characters to play along with you in case you can't play co-op with an actual human person but you'd like somebody else in the game with you I guess they're kind of like a bot and I he didn't really get into specifics about how smart they are but I don't believe they're actually gonna do Easter egg quest steps they won't you know get parts for you like shield pieces they won't finish quest lines and stuff like that I guess they're there just to kind of help out and maybe attract zombies so I don't think it's gonna be be super useful in solving quests but that being said i also think that even though maps like Voyage with its massive amount of easter eggs put into it and maybe super complicated steps, I think it's still going to be able to be done by yourself and it's perfectly like optimized for that as well. Black Ops 3, I thought a lot of them were pretty intimidating solo, but after you practice them for a while and you get used to it, it's really not that bad. Like I've soloed every easter egg in Call of Duty Zombies possible and it just takes a little while to get used to that kind of thing. I also got confirmed from Jason that Voyage is going to have a lot of story-based easter eggs. So, like, you know how when the original zombie storyline was first being built up, there was a lot of radios, ciphers, hidden messages, and, uh, you know, small little world-building pieces that would help us. I think that's what Voyage is going to be filled with a lot of. There will be a bunch of that in 9 as well, but I think that Voyage is going to be the primary source of that, from what I understand. And as far as things like boss fights go, I think we have no idea. So, a lot of people were concerned that in the 9 trailer, when we saw that big monster coming out the very end, that that was supposed to be the boss that is definitely not it Treyarch has never shown a main boss fight in any trailers or any promotional content whatsoever that's one another small criticism i have about world war ii is that with the shadow throne they ended up showing the main boss at the end of their first trailer which is i don't know kind of takes away from the initial shock at the beginning of first going into that boss fight but it is what it is like you know studios run their games a little differently but i don't think Treyarch would ever show a main boss in a trailer whatsoever but we don't have any hints as to what they could even be in voice I think the old days of not having boss fights after easter eggs are over, you know what I mean? Like, we've come too far. If they went back to the Black Ops 1 style where you finish the last step and you get, you know, a couple perks like a death machine, people would be very upset. No cutscene, any of that stuff, I think. Techn technologically, they've advanced enough and also just in terms of story and what they can do, they've advanced enough where we're gonna have boss fights of some degree. It might not be traditional like we're used to seeing always, like World War II did switch it up a little bit with the Moisture boss fight in DLC 1, which was interesting. I don't think it was necessarily executed the best, but it was a cool idea, I think, and I think if Treyarch would capitalize on that and sort of learn from what The Darkest Shore did, they could change and make something amazing. I also believe we're going to have longer cutscenes. Now, I, I have really don't have much to base this off of just from things that I've heard and things that I know. I think we're going to have maybe a little bit longer cutscenes than we're used to having in BO3 because, like, the trailers and all the promotional content they've shown, we've got a lot and there's still a lot to go, so I can only assume that to really flush out the story that they're trying to put out we're gonna have very long cutscenes after boss fights maybe even a couple minutes long if possible i know zetsubo was a kind of long one but maybe even like five six minutes who really knows but i do believe that is going to be a thing also the actual steps for the quest that we're going to be doing i really can't speak too much about because i'm not really sure but i hope that if treyarch's listening to this or anybody over there i hope that what in my opinion what makes a really good easter egg is a perfect balance of logic puzzles and gameplay challenge puzzles so like garad crowy for example was a very good like example in that aspect right you had the logic puzzles when it came down to the tube and getting the codex thing but you also had all of those gameplay challenges for the trophies i think i don't know that's one of my favorite easter eggs personally and i do believe a good balance of those two different kinds of things uh are the recipe to make a good easter egg shallon shuffle and adobe for example was pretty good with that as well maybe a little bit too heavy on the logic side of things and uh, it got a little bit exhausting after a while and then some are all just gameplay which is great but you also don't get to kind of stretch your brain with the logic puzzles like in other maps. 
So we'll see where things go. This is pretty much the things that I know about Voyage of Despair. It's just going to be a huge map, and I know it's going to be jam-packed full of Easter eggs. Probably a lot more, and it's going to overwhelm people because they're not expecting to have this much in one Zombies map, right? I think that this map is going to be played for years to come, just like Shadows of Evil was. I give that one maybe the, the, the stamp of the most replayable Zombies map ever. At least one of them, in my opinion, as I think it aged super well. I don't know if I was the biggest fan of it when it came out, but as we discovered more about the map, we got used to it all its new functions and mechanics I, I think it's probably my favorite map to date i'm hoping that either voyage or nine or something in black ops 4 can take uh, or o overtake the spot of shadows of evil as my number one favorite zombies map but i guess we'll have to wait and see but other than that, guys, I think we can go ahead and pretty much wrap the video up here. I'm just sort of getting the information out for Black Ops 4, and I want to gauge your guys' hype levels. You know what I'm saying? So let me know what you're thinking about Voyage. Let me know what you're thinking about 9 and Blood of the Dead and all that. But uh, Black Ops 4 will be coming out really, really soon. I'm crazy excited. I hope you guys are as well. But if you enjoyed the video, then be sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you are brand new. And also, if you don't follow me on Twitter, then go and do that. Link will be in the description down below. Follow my Twitter page. We're almost at 10,000. And also, go join my Discord server if you have not done so as well. That will All that stuff is in the description and go click those links and get more involved with me. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you all on the next video or the next live stream. Peace out.